Our next case is a 49-year-old man with several comorbidities. Diabetes type 2, provenly, uh, histologically proven NASH, hypertension, hypercholesterolemia, and obesity with a BMI at 38, and sleep apnea. He already has a past history of ischemic cerebral vascular accident. He is currently treated by oral antidiabetics, but still he presents difficulties in controlling his diabetes. The, EMA, the MRI revealed liver steatosis. He is scheduled today for geodine mucosal resurfacing. And we shall join Professors De Vier and Bishop for the procedure. Hi, Jack. Uh, good, good afternoon. So it's a pleasure to work here with the, the, my favorite team here and uh, under the supervision <laughs> of Raf. So uh, this is an interesting technique that you have already seen here last year. Uh, but in this case, the, the thing which is even more interesting is the indication. The indication to treat this patient is a pilot study that we are conducting. Uh, the PI is my colleague, Alia Defi, and uh, this is exploring the role of duodenal mucosal resurfacing on the modulation of non-alcoholic steatohepatitis. As you know that this technique, uh, Raph will speak about that tomorrow, I think, in mm -hmm. his talk, but this technique aims to uh, decrease the insulin resistance uh, by destroying the mucosa of the proximal duodenum. And the insulin resistance is also one of the main factors influencing the development of NASH. The principle of the technique is that we have a catheter. I have a guide wire here that I already placed into the duodenum. And we have a catheter which has two functions. The first function is from the side port we have some small needles inside, and we can apply suction. And these side uh, catheters are used to do a submucosal injection in order to lift the mucosa from uh, the, the muscle uh, in order to be able to expose the mucosa without the risk of destroying the muscle. So if you can uh, inject like for a uh, submucosal injection, Okay, you see the balloon is not completely inflated. Yeah. This is the position of the balloon when we do a submucosal injection. Now we will deflate the balloon, and we will inflate the balloon like it would be for an ablation. The purpose will be now, uh, this is what we will do several times during the procedure. Uh, we will inject uh, saline with me methylene blue into the submucosa, and then we will ablate by perfusing uh, hot water at 94 degrees for 10 seconds in a very determined pre-cooling and post-cooling uh, scheme. So now you can inflate the balloon like if it would be for the ablation. See, if you look at the, the screen, you will yeah. see a warm-up, which gives you the temperature of the water which will, give into the, which will go into the, the balloon. Yeah. So we have to wait for the reaching the proper temperature. Maybe it's not 94, but 86 degrees. As soon as we will reach 86 degrees, there is a, a pre-cooling. So you see the pre-cooling is now. So this is the same temperature as the radio frequency ablation. Exactly yeah. same temperature. And then you will see at one time, uh, you will tell me when you have eating. So we're eating now. So it's eating now, and I feel the, the hot water in my right hand there. And of course, the balloon now is very hot. And now it's cooling. And then there is a post-cooling. You see, it's very quick. And when the post-cooling is, uh, is down, then very quickly you have a return to the, the normal temperature, and then you will deflate the balloon. So this is what will happen now, but inside the duodenum. So now I have a, just a guide wire here. Uh, we, we have a tapered catheter, and the idea will be to, <laughs> to try to place the, the catheter inside the duodenum. You need a, a fluoroscopic guidance now. And you do not place a scope next to it. You could place an uh, XP uh, scope uh, next uh, to it. Uh, I will place the scope, attendez. I will place the scope next to it, but first, I prefer to go up to the, the, the entrance of the duodenum with the catheter. 
because I don't want to pass the scope and the balloon into the esophagus. And we realized that it was a little bit easier when doing first uh, the catheter. You see the catheter is now coming. Yeah, we can see I that. I must have the catheter following the curve there. And so with this uh, taper tip, it's, uh, it's yeah. significantly easier, so you isn't see it? That you see that Mark is following the guide wire there? Yeah. I think the impressive thing is it's not looping in the stomach. It's going straight down to the pylorus, uh, which is, is unusual for a catheter. This is a very good, uh, a, a very, a very good work of Christina here because she applies the right pressure just at the right time. You see that if, yes. like in this case, I have not too many trouble to go to the duodenum. I prefer to reach the duodenum. And then I will, of course, check that my guide wire is still there yeah, at good. the level of the triangle because this is probably the most important thing. And now I want to have my catheter there. Mark, I will ask you to focus like that. You see that there, it's okay. Mark, stay like that, please. Uh, I will just advance a little bit more the balloon there to be a little bit below the Uh, below the marker that I have placed. So now I will go with the scope alongside. Yep. But probably the most important thing is to empty completely the stomach when you have placed the first clip in order yeah. to have as a minimal insufflation of the stomach. We have a nice view now on the papilla. You see the papilla on the left side. Uh, this is the... the, the the marker that I have placed, the, the, the clip that I have placed, uh, I think that my, the balloon is in a good position for my first ablation, which will start two centimeters below the papilla. And now what I will do is that I will suck the air as much as possible. We will inject. Okay. And so now, uh, during uh, 30 seconds, you see on the fluoroscopic image, that we have the inflation of the balloon. I don't know if you have the fluoroscope. Yes, you have it. You don't see anything because now we are uh, injecting. Uh, advance the needles. So we advance the needle, the, the, the three needles. And now we're, in, we're injecting the same. Which are uh, inside the side ports. So now the three side catheters are there. They have sucked the mucosa. And uh, thanks to uh, the advancement of the needle, we are doing a submucosal injection. The principle of this technique uh, will be to do uh, two submucosal injection and one ablation. Mm -hmm. But I interrupted you, uh, Raf. You wanted to do a comment. That's like you, the positioning of your scope. Uh, you really use the markers that are on the catheter to define the position. You know, in the past, we would go back and forth to see if the balloon is in the correct position, but you kind of adapted the technique to just do it more systematically yeah. with the. The, the the, this, is, this is a very good comment because uh, the, the thing is that you have not to be too curious with this procedure. <laughs> you see that I'm just pushing a little bit. We will re-inject there. Uh, I just use the marker and the fluoroscopic guidance. Mm -hmm. And I will uh, mainly use that as a, as a guide to, to be sure that I, I'm doing properly the procedure. And as, as much as possible, I try to do the procedure going from proximal to distal. Yeah. And even if I feel at the beginning yeah. that, the, that the injection is, the, the ablation is not complete, and I want to do an, an ablation a little bit more proximal, yeah. I would do this ablation at the end of the procedure. Okay, and in terms of safety, is there, uh, what, what is the risk of complications? Uh, in, uh, in my feeling, it's quite very safe, but uh, just to tell, there have been two strictures which have been reported in the first pilot study. Mm -hmm. I think that this is something which has been solved by the company which has designed another way to treat the patient. We are using the same balloon, yeah. so there is no more the problem of incomplete submucosal injection, uh, which can really damage. So you see now we are in a place and we will directly go to the ablation. Mm -hmm. So we have two injections, one ablation. And then I will show you uh, a little bit the results, not too much, but I will mm -hmm. show you. And uh, the, unfortunately, I think that recently there was one perforation, which was, I think, not related to the device, 
but related to the procedure, something mm -hmm. which always remind us that when we work in the small bowel, uh, the risk is never zero. Huh? Mm -hmm. uh, we know that the retroperitoneal part of the duodenum is, uh, is, can be very floppy sometimes, mm -hmm. and then we have to be very careful mm -hmm. when we do the, the treatment. So you have pre-cooling now? Yeah. Pre-cooling, so we are pre-cooling. Uh, uh, Jack, how long does it take to do one complete ablation, that is, one patient? Uh, 45 to 50 minutes. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. okay, you see now uh, that we have the first ablation there. You see that there we have done, you see that the bottom, the first ablation, which is probably a little bit too distant. Mm -hmm. So I will probably have to come back a little bit for repeating that. You see at this level. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, which is a little bit more difficult because I need to have a more proximal ablation, uh, but I will do that. So you position now the, the blue markers yeah. to the, at the distal side of the previous ablation side. Okay, yeah. and now you see I'm coming back uh, even a little bit more, but not too much because otherwise I will lose my endoscope. Mm -hmm. You see the papilla is there. And then we will repeat the submucosal injection two times in the ablation disc. Yes. 